Okay, here we go. A lot of people have uh, requested an update on the video I posted, whether we're, uh, you know, thinking about the, the bump a nine or the not bump a nine, anytime it gets a 69, 79, 89. And uh, so there's been a lot of feedback and a lot of conversation. And, um, and, and anytime you have 20,000 uh, views, that there's, there's some people that, that completely disagree. And, and also with 20, if I knew that many people were going to watch that thing, man, I would have like, try to have been more articulate and organize my thought and thought and like worn my nice hoodie but um but it is what it is so um what i want to talk about is those people that um really really disagree and um and now no, those people don't comment on the post what they <laughs> <laughs> they do is they send them to me on a direct message and so um and first of all let me assure you like i am not trying to change anybody's mind you know i really see every teacher as their own educational entrepreneur you do your thing in your classroom the the one thing i find disconcerting and and i really hope people will stop and consider is the line of thinking where there's a teacher that says you know well the reason I do it this way is because all of my teachers did it that way and I turned out just fine and I went to college and the professor said to do it that way so I do I, I became a teacher I was a first year teacher I had a mentor teacher who said do it that way I'm on a team and we all do it this way in my department my department chair said so everybody on my hallway does it this way. that right there I find concerning and and because all I want a teacher to do is stop and think not is it the what we've always done but is this the right thing for kids Am I doing the what's best for the kid? Like, listen to your heart and what's in your gut. Is it, does it feel right? That's it. All right, so let's get into it. And and the, these uh, these these this, the the people that challenge my line of thinking. Um, really, all the messages from around the country fall into um, like four categories. So let me go through real quick. Number one is um, the kids grade, the 69 is 100% the kids fault. They earned it, that's their grade, it's not mine, it's theirs. Now, you know what, the more I thought about it, I think, man, I think you're right. Like when I went back and watched the video, I think you're absolutely right. I think what I should have been is more impeccable with what I mean in that the 69, that's the kids grade, you're right, they earned it. What I'm worried about is the other side of the equation, the other 31 points. Like the 31 points somehow I did not deliver to the kids, so they got so they got it. That's the part I want to look at. Can I own any responsibility of the remaining 31 points a kid didn't earn? Is there anything there that I can take responsibility for? Again, could I have taught it better, presented it better, more effectively, more efficiently, more in, in, in a more differentiated way to fit that kid's particular learning style? Could I have done anything, motivated the kid, inspired him, went and grabbed him out of lunch, dragged him to the classroom, watch him to work on it, did, could have called the parents for it? Is there anything else I possibly could have done? And every time I ask myself that, it's always yes. There's something I could have done. To me, man, it's worth a point. All right. So you're right. Next one is it's just not fair. It's not fair to the rest of the kids. And I think when we're talking about anything other than a semester grade at the high school, you're probably right. But at the high school, the reason I do it, and I don't, I don't really worry about the fairness because it doesn't affect the other kids. If a kid has an 82, if I bumped them a point, it's an 83. It's still a B. It still calculates the GPA the same way. What I'm talking about is the nines a bump it to the next letter grade that affects GPA. So that's the fairness thing. I agree with you there. And the other one is it doesn't teach accountability and personal responsibility, which I love it, man. Like we are on the same page. My whole thing is I want a teacher to use the content of their classroom as the vehicle to teach all that stuff that's going to affect this kid's character so they can use all the stuff that we teach them in the classroom. Accountability, personal responsibility, that's like the foundation of it all. But we are totally on the same page, brother from another mother, all of that. The only difference between us I don't use the one point on a semester grade to teach accountability and personal responsibility. I do it the other 90 days of the semester. There's a gazillion ways I can do that. Each and every day, I just don't do it on that last day when I'm grading. All right, here's the last one. <laughs> and it's my favorite. Like of all of them, this is the best. It, it, was, it was just three words. You're just dumb. <laughs> and I love him. And, and you know, like I really had to consider, maybe he's right. And um, and like I thought about it, 
And like, if you think about all the information that's available in the universe, like in the like everything you could possibly know, and then how much of that I personally have command of that, you know what, man? I think you're right again. Like I read. I, like, I know, like a grain of sand on the beach of knowledge. It's so little. Man, I have so much to learn. You're right. So there you go. So that so that's my feedback, and um, that, that's kind of where we are. And I appreciate all the conversation we've had, and I've, I've met some great people online and, and friendships, and, um, and, it, and it's been awesome. All right, there you go. We'll see you.